Welcome to Without a Recipe Sandwiches. That is a texture of bread that I've never had before. <laughs> this is part two of our war extravaganza. Oh, this is wet. <laughs> okay, off, off. This is how far into Without a Recipe we are, is that we're going back to the beginning. We're making bread, and that's just half of the battle. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't Everything that goes into this sandwich from scratch. Uh-oh, the mustard. Something's wrong about this. Do we think this looks appetizing? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of college. <laughs> <laughs> Last year was a total blast and we're dialing up the fun even more. It's without a recipe live. We're doing a big live special to end it all. Anything can happen. Welcome to Without a Recipe Live! Join us live in the kitchen. You don't want to miss it. You guys get to vote on the winner. It is about to go down. Get your tickets today at tryguys.com slash live. Welcome to part two of this season of Without a Recipe. Eugene is back in the kitchen, and Marissa is excited to make her Without a Recipe debut. This week, they're making sandwiches. Marissa, that sandwich looks like it has <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> Will the guys be on a roll? And of course, Eugene's favorite, Bread, bread. With, with fish. fish. Or will they be stuck in a pickle? You wanted to keep all of that sort of vomit-inducing flavor in there. That's good. Okay. <laughs> the guys will have two days to make their bread and fillings from scratch and present them to our panel of judges. Welcome to Without a Recipe Sandwiches. Hey everyone, I'm Rosanna Pansino. I host one of the most popular shows on the internet, and now I'm a judge on a couple Food Network shows. My name is Josh Scher. I am the host of Mythical Kitchen, as well as the A Hot Dog is a Sandwich podcast. I've written weekly recipe columns. I've done professional recipe development for over 10 years. I am a cookbook author. My name is Trevor Everts. Professionally, I am silly on the internet. I also bake things occasionally over on Mythical Kitchen, and I played GeoGuess with Keith one time. We are here in the Mythical Kitchen. So bread making, it's a pretty complicated, well no, it's actually a pretty simple process, but it's very easy to mess up. Basically flour, water, yeast, and then salt is important. If you don't salt your bread, it's not gonna taste good. Making bread without a recipe is tough because you can make bread with a recipe and still screw it up royally, which I have done many times before. A sandwich can go wrong in many different ways. I've had a lot of bad sandwiches. To me, the bread really is the key to a good sandwich. If you have a sandwich that is very wet and has a ton of fillings in it, you might want a crustier, harder bread that can actually stand up to it. So to me, sandwiches really are so much about architecture and it's about being thoughtful at every single level of making that sandwich. We're making sandwiches today, but we're not just like assembling a sandwich, that's too easy. No, we're baking the bread, we're supposed to try to really cook the meat. It's a savory episode, it's a sandwich. This one, I really should win. I've never done bread well. That is the worst food I've ever tried in my life. Every year we seem to find a new way to make bread. Now we're making basic sandwich bread. Basic. I'm still gonna f it up. I know how to make a sandwich without a recipe. I don't know how to make any of the components within a sandwich. <laughs> I've never baked bread. In this season of war, I am dedicating everything to the women in my family. Keith always had daddy's favorite, even though his dad actually doesn't like cinnamon raisin. Yeah, what? it's it's a bit, y'all. He likes it, but it's not his favorite flavor combination. I'm sure his dad's like watching it and being like, why does he keep making cinnamon raisin for me? <laughs> We're not putting that in the video. We're toast. Thank Rachel God. Rachel told us to do that. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it's time for sandwiches. All right, heroes. 30 minutes on the clock in three, two, one. Oh, all right. Okay. Time has begun. It's time Great. to make Bread. This episode, right in this moment, I've just changed what I'm going to do. <laughs> that I was gonna make a Reuben on Marble Rye, a delicious sandwich, Becky's favorite. But I thought, ah, it's not a little boring. And then Rachel said that she made a beer mustard bread once, but I just heard beer. What if I made a beer bread and a beer cheese with a beer mustard, a beer sandwich? I might have some beer right now. What time is it? 
It, well, right now it's about 9.40. Big fried chicken sandwich, ice cold beer. I mean, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I feel like I'm taking way too long to be too precise. Like, when are we ever precise on this show? When are we ever precise on this show? So for today, I am going to make a sourdough soursop sandwich, which is a play on PB&J. Soursop is a fruit found in the Caribbean. It's also called guanabana. It's one of my favorite fruits. So I wanted to do sort of like a sweet and sour with the sourdough and the soursop and, and make like an adult PB&J. My sandwich is dedicated to my older sister and she loves Bon mi. Mm. She also loves seafood and lobster rolls. Today, I am making the Christy. My older sister is obsessed with seafood. She loves Southeast Asian cuisine. So typically, bun mi comes on a baguette, but lobster rolls usually have like a soft bun, neither of which are sliced bread. So my thought is I want to make a very buttery, soft bread. So I'm doing like a brioche. Never made a brioche. Today, I am honoring the women in my family again. In a way, I am as well honoring the women in my family. Today I'm making the queef. It's a queso and beef sandwich, the queef. I'm going to be infusing a Southwest influence. So we're gonna have some queso cheese, some hatch chilies, bring a little spice to the queef. We uh, at one point did consider making every episode uh, queef themed. It was gonna be Zach's queef and seafen, uh, but we decided against that. We're making a white sandwich bread, uh, so that's why we have milk and butter. Those extra fats are gonna give it a softer texture and also give it more flavor. A Little bit of sugar here for some sweetness, but that's kind of the simple simple basic ingredients for our, uh, for our sandwich bread. So we're actually gonna start with our mixer bowl here, and I'm just gonna get this water and this milk have been warmed to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that is the temperature at which you want to bloom yeast. Anything hotter, it can kill the yeast. Anything lower, you're not gonna get as much bloom. It's always a good idea to bloom your yeast give it a little extra rise, get it going, feed it some sugar. It's just gonna allow your bread to proof more evenly and faster. First thing you gotta do is activate your yeast. If there's one thing I learned, you activate yeast because it's alive and you want it to wake up from its slumber. So I think I'm gonna do mostly the bread flour. You know I don't love buckwheat, but like maybe I'll do like 50 grams, just a little kiss. <laughs> now I'm gonna put beer in this, but I'm also gonna put yeast in it because I don't wanna just rely on the beer. Beer, sugar, yeast, drink up little baby. Like What's salt. saltier, sea salt or kosher salt? Also you don't wanna add salt to your yeast uh, before you add flour because salt does kill yeast. So I like to wait until I have a little bit of flour mixed in and the dough has almost already come together a little bit before I add my salt. Some kosher salt, but not as much. Just wanna incorporate these together. No, okay. All right, so our yeast is bloomed and I'm going to add a cup of this flour to start and then we have softened butter going in here. That's gonna add a little bit of that softness, a little bit of that flavor. So I've got about three and a half cups of flour in this bowl. So many factors can go into hydrating a dough. It could be a little more humid outside and then you would need to use a little bit more flour because your dough is gonna be wetter. You really just wanna add it gradually. Let it mix together. I'm gonna get that salt in there now that it's mixed together and just mix it up until it's pulling away from the sides and becomes a cohesive dough. I have bread flour, some salt, a bunch of onion flakes, garlic powder, and a little bit of poppy seeds, but honestly, they've disappeared. Um, how long is it? It's not burping yet. It's supposed to burp, right? It's instant. It says fast acting. There's some bubbles. So you don't have to cream anything. Why am I creaming this? There's not butter in bread. Brioche. What's that? Brioche is like a buttery, pastry-like bread. Yum. So I'm making it kind of like sweeter. All my dry ingredients, flour, baking something, salt, and I put sugar in, milk, and then I need my yeast. And I don't know if this is activated enough. How much time do we have? 18. 18. Ooh, it's gonna be tight. So I have sourdough starter from my friend Christina that she got on Etsy. Is Christina coming to the judging? Nope, For the just judging me. later? She'll be there in spirit. Huh, weird. Whenever <laughs> I cheat, I make sure my cheaters and accomplices are present. This isn't cheating. Isn't it? 
Getting that... sourdough starter? Rachel didn't say anything about me bringing starter. So is Rachel gonna join you in the judging panels? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always there. It's true, she is always there, isn't she? Can you use my backpack, Rachel? I had this idea last night. I realized I had something in my freezer. Backpack salmon. You doing what? I'm making some fish loaf. I'm honoring my sister with fish bread. Oh, that's what I'm missing. So fucking dumb eggs. <laughs> Generally when adding things to bread, you wanna sort of stay away from things that are gonna hydrate it different unless you've taken that into account with how much water or other hydrators you're using. Come on, I'm Eugene. I'm trying to make simple bread. And something that's tough for me anytime I'm with Eugene is that it takes me as long to do almost nothing as it does for him to do. I'm a, I'm a very uh, type A go-getter, Zach. He's making bread and cooking dinner at the same time. So I'm basically just cooking the salmon so it's not going in raw, because it needs to like mince into the dough. So I'll have like salmon essence. Okay, if Eugene's gonna make it complicated, me too. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing this for, for women. I'm chopping up some onions instead of just the dried onion flakes to get some like real onion in the bread. I think that's gonna give it a nice artisan feel. What is this, Rachel? When have I needed this, huh? Only cheaters do math. Yeah. Oh, no, no, not in that way. <laughs> 10 minutes. I'm gonna Ooh, take this looks. out because I need to I need to feel it. Yeah, we gotta work it by hand. It's time for the hands. Yeah. So you can see the dough is like a little bit tacky. It's not super dry, it's soft, and you get that nice smooth top when you ball it up like this. And there it is. And it's got a little bit, when you press it Ooh. down, it bounces back. And I'm just adding more stickiness with the peanut butter. Ooh. Okay, this, and then I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna fold this in. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Interesting, that's a lot of oil. You know, if it doesn't have this structure, if it's too wet, you just throw it back in and add more flour and just wait till it comes together. Don't wanna use too wet or too soft of a dough. Oh my, I think I need to pop this back in here for a little bit. It's like becoming alive. It looks like <laughs> a Pee Wee's Playhouse appliance. Oh, you're putting onion in the dough? Yeah. What is your actual bread? What's the onion for? Um. Flavor. So, let's add fish. Everyone's favorite game show. Welcome back to Let's Add, add fish. fish, America's favorite game show. The show where we ask, does this regular everyday thing, could it use some fish? Cake with fish. And of course, Eugene's favorite, bread. butter bread with, with fish. fish. Josh, we have our dough. Do you know what comes next? Next, we proof it, Trevor. Nice. I don't have a bowl, but we're gonna grease up a bowl. We're gonna put it in there. We're gonna cover it and uh, let it proof for about an hour until it's doubled in size. Flat bank that dough. That's a like bad dough. Get a little more tough. You gotta toughen up. You're having beer now. You're growing up. <laughs> You're an adult now. You just had your first beer. I didn't put any more grease in. I think the peanut butter yeah, I think is enough. I think the peanut butter is enough. Rise, my babies, rise. Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. I'm gonna need it now. Mm. Oh, this is wet. Oh, that's a wet dough. <laughs> oh, that's a wet dough. It's very important to get the right texture, so if your dough is too sticky, you gotta keep working on it. Don't say F it and throw it in a bowl anyway. Oh, this is a soft dough. I'm assuming it may be okay for brioche. We're not gonna make it. Eugene, five seconds. Perfect. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay. <sighs> dough. 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 The dough is proofed, and now it's time to put it in the pan to proof some more. We have our dough, big and beautiful and proofed, and I'm gonna do the plop method. And we're gonna get it in the slow pan, so you wanna punch out all the air. Okay, it's time for a time out. Okay, guys, we gotta take a second to work on the other episode. So we're in the middle of our cake episode and we're interrupting this to do, wow, which one's mine, which one's yours? Yours are these. These two are mine, wow, yours gotta okay. be it. Yeah. Okay, How's it going? it's stretchy and soggy on the bottom a little bit. It feels kind of light and kind of heavy. It smells like fish, fish and butter. I don't know if this one is wetter because of the onion, 
We're just gonna roll this into a log, pretty simple. You do wanna get that first round of air bubbles out, otherwise your dough is just gonna be way overproofed. Lovely, this is a good way to keep a consistent shape too, because like you're literally creating a symmetrical rectangle, then rolling it up. If you just plopped it in there and tried to sort of mash it out, your bread might be thicker at one end, thinner at the other. I'm making a little bit of a shape. It kind of looks like a burrito. <laughs> and hopefully it'll rise a little bit more. Wow, this is really gonna rise, huh? This is gonna be cool. Okay, great, I'm done. I like to kind of press it down as I go just to make sure it stays tight, tuck the ends a little bit as I go, roll it up tight, gonna plop this upside down, pinch it closed so it doesn't tear, it doesn't separate. So now we've got our dough. You just plop Holy it. Inch. This is gonna go through a second proof so it doesn't fill out the pan. That's okay if it's not a perfect shape. It's gonna shape while it proofs in the pan. Oh, it feels so soft. I wonder if it's too soft, but it is supposed to be brioche, so. Because brioche is braided, isn't it? Wow. Am I crazy? Also, I used to braid my sister's hair because I'm gay. Okay, well, yeah, I'm done. These are my two beautiful, that's three braids and that's five. Bring out the dough! Bring out the dough! Bring out the dough! Okay. And those are mine. One of them is bigger wow. than the other. Oh, they look cute. One's they, a lot bigger than the other. It honestly looks baked already. I know. Our bread is proofed. It is in the loaf pan. It's got that nice rise above the pan. This is like a perfect height for it to be. It's gonna go in the oven. It's gonna bake. It's gonna rise up a little bit more. Oh, oh baby! Yeah. <laughs> How do you know that it's why, just like that? Why do we all have one that's bigger than the other? What are you doing, Zach? Don't, don't, Zach, don't, what are don't you doing? It. Let him do it, let him do it, let him do it. The last thing you'd want to do right now is to punch this down or release any of the air. Let him do there's it. There's too much air! No, 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 let no, him no, do it. Won't. Yeah, there's too much. You're insane. Yeah, squeeze it out. Yeah, squeeze it. Put your hands all the way in there. <laughs> okay, so um, we're all gonna stick our uh, buns in at the same time, get them all nice and hot. All of our buns go in so the oven. So shall we move over to the oven? Do you want to like, should we wash them with eggs or something? Not do an egg wash. I just want a nice soft, Mat top. You don't really need to egg wash a sandwich loaf. If you buy a loaf of bread at the store, you'll see it's not really shiny on top. Let's put the puppies in the oven. Let's put the puppies. How long do you guys think they take for? 40 minutes. I'm gonna guess like yeah. five yeah. minutes to an hour. We cook this bread at 375 for about 30 to 34 minutes. And now we wait. This has been it smells amazing just over 20 minutes. Out here. It smells like fish, it smells like onion, it smells like beer, it smells like bread. Yeah, it's wild. It's amazing. Wild, wild smell. Now, like let's take a look at our breads, huh? My bread is getting rather brown on Your top. Your bread looks good. It looks good. If your bread's already getting super brown on top but you know it's not cooked all the way through, just take a little tin foil, do a light tent on it. That's gonna stop any browning and it's gonna let your bread continue to cook. Oh shit, mine's fucking hard. Fuck me. Okay, yeah, take my boat, take both out. Wow, look at it, it's got so tall. Yours is Thank beautiful. God. What if it keeps getting taller? It just keeps growing taller and taller and taller and can't get out. The head gets stuck in the ceiling and then can't get him out. And you're like, oh no, I guess he's there now. What if he just keeps getting bigger and bigger? I think it, it needs like 10 to 15 more minutes and we pull him out. Hey Siri, how long does it take for, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, what if he said his own bread? Um, yeah, he's not there 15 yet. minutes? Yeah, let's do another 15. 15. And We've covered them now, so there's really no way of knowing unless we start smelling burn. But let's say you undercook it, toast it. That's I definitely is a backup plan of mine. I think that the bread is done. Oh, lovely. Trevor. Look at the golden brown on the top. Look at the nice little dome. And then you can also see around the edges here, there's that little golden brown down in the pan so you know that it's cooked all the way through. If you're worried about it, uh, bread should be between 190 and 200 degrees if you temp check the middle. It's been about 35 minutes, we're anxious. Eugene's taking his out, which means I'm also gonna take mine out because uh, Eugene is usually right. Oh yeah. Ooh, oh, look at that structure. Stuff coming through. I don't know, do we have that toothpick? I'm gonna do the cake test. <laughs> no, you can't really toothpick test a bread because you could stick a toothpick in a bread, pull it out, and it could come out completely clean, but your dough is still very raw in the middle. Let's try. I'm good. I'd rather it be softer than harder. That looks like a perfect butt. It is a really it nice butt. So we have to present one loaf to the judges intact, and then the other one we get to slice up our sandwich. And I'm glad, you know, our first ever without a recipe. It was bread. We made bread. Yeah. Did we learn anything in the last six years? We'll find out right after this. <laughs> it's the next day. 
and now our little chefs just have one hour to make their fillings and assemble their sandwiches. Bread, 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 bread. We are bread. Look at this. It's all wrapped up. Now one of these is going to be the sandwich, and one has to be just served to the judges for them to inspect. Heavy bread. Oh. Is it really that much heavier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Our loaves have rested overnight. Hmm. This looks like bread to me. Oh, that's actually really pretty. Yeah, so pretty. <laughs> so the bread is done. It's got a nice crumb to it. When we're talking about crumb, that's sort of what it feels like and how much comes off of the bread uh, when you touch it. It's inside, it's got nice little air pockets that shows a good proof, but they're not big. Take a bite. Mm. All right. Yum! I mean, actually, it's really great. And the thing I love about this, it passes the bounce back test. That means the gluten has been adequately developed and it wasn't too moist, it wasn't too much fat in the bread. Because you want that nice chew. If it's just gonna compress, it'll be dense, it'll be crappy. When you eat it, it'll stick to the roof of your mouth. This is a big moment. Cut in and make sure it cooked all the way through. <laughs> yeah, that's bread. It's a dense bread. I, I regret um, the way that I pushed it down. <laughs> so everyone just like, look at how pretty this Five piece braiding, yeah, yeah, everyone's nodding. Oh, look at the little salmon chunks. Oh, yeah, that's like see. a touch dense, but. That's bread. It's bread. That's bread, this that's, is this, bread. This is the most bread bread I've ever made on this show. Oh, 100%. Bread's f***ing bread. That doesn't look terrible, it's a little dense, but not terrible. Oh, it's dense. It is. It's really dense. It's so dense. How's it taste? It's not good. Oh no. It's. You can't taste the peanut butter. <laughs> so we're making what I'm calling a Capri Club. This is like an Italian version, a little bit chefy, a little bit fancier of a classic turkey club sandwich. So we got prosciutto. We're gonna simply put this in the oven until it's nice and crispy, about 10 minutes. And then we're making a lovely basil and lemon pecorino aioli from scratch, which we can start on now. But you wanna crack two eggs in there and then separate two eggs just to get the yolk. Some lemon juice, peanut oil, thick a bunch of basil. Again, now is the point where you can start adding your flavoring agents to it. Hefty pinch of salt and a lot of fresh cracked pepper. Layering flavors, that's where sandwiches are born. I'm gonna blend a little bit of pecorino in there. I just say when. <laughs> what is this, the Olive Garden? When you're here, you're family. So what are you doing next with your queef? I wanna bring out a lot of sweetness because my bread is gonna be more uh, savory. So I'm trying to caramelize onions, I love. Onions are so good and so underrated, but caramelizing onions takes a while. So I'm just trying to get as much time cooking as possible. Uni, one of my favorite seafoods. And this is my sister's favorite, absolute favorite. Right. Going to make basically like an uni butter. I don't really want to mess with the uni too much because it's just so delicious. So I'm just going to mix this together. I got to make some peanut butter. I'm making peanut butter. Peanut, salt, a little bit of sugar. Come on down to Mustard Town, Mustard Town, Mustard Town. Not a lot of beer, because otherwise it's a too thin. A beer mustard, they exist, but I believe they're made in the fermenting process. So like, not just like this. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should heat the mustard to boil out the, the beer. We're gonna simmer it with more beer to get more beer flavor. Look, this looks good. This, look, I think I made peanut butter. I wanna make some onions. That tastes good. That's the best thing I've made so far. <laughs> So I am doing a lobster scallop on me. I love scallops. My only issue is it's one of those things in restaurants where you just kind of want twice the amount they give you. I'm gonna just make sure these are seared perfectly because these are probably expensive and I want to make sure they're delicious. And I think this is gonna be enough to film. I think my sandwich needs to have a little more oomph to it because this is gonna be a sloppy sandwich. It's gonna be wet. I need something firm to really stand up to it. So this is Hatch Chili's. This is for my cheese, but I want to get a little bit of that flavor into the meat as well. I added some white vinegar. This is shredded steak. I wanted something nice and thin that I could give a nice crisp to. And I will be putting some sugar in there as well. And so sandwiches to me, they're all about combinations of textures and flavors. So we have turkey right here. This is just gonna bring you that meatiness. But since we know that turkey isn't the most flavorful element, we are adding crispy prosciutto because then you have the meat and you have your condiment or condiment meat. Oh. Okay, we got chicken tenders. 
Well, I'm gonna put all these in the dry seasoning first. Dry seasoning has cayenne, salt, pepper, mustard, onion, garlic, powder, Italian seasoning, probably oregano and basil and something else. We're making a little beer batter over here. Right now it's just flour and Guinness, but we're gonna put a little salt and some seasoning in there too. We got beer bread and beer batter, which is also bread. These are guanabanas. They're a tropical fruit from the Caribbean. These feel ripe, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be too annoying and time consuming to take the seeds out, so I'm gonna cook the seeds with it together and then I'll take them out later. 40 minutes. Okay, let's get frying. We're gonna put in a couple tenders, four at a time. Let's give it three minutes. Yeah, they're cooking. They're nice. They look like beer battered chicken tenders. And that's what they are. I'm getting just the thicker juice out because there's a lot of pulp and seed. I am pressing out the juice and then hopefully it'll be warm enough to add the pectin in to thicken it up. Okay, that's a good amount. I know lobster is delicious and I know that back in the day, people used to think they were sea bugs and they gave them to prisoners because they were such a cheap food source. So sometimes everything's just about perspective and time. Lobster rolls, you want them to be just like a little chunky, almost like a really thick, you know, like a chicken salad, but you still want nice, good chunks of lobster. So that's enough, I'm gonna give it some flavor. Give it the Vietnamese flavor, so some premium fish sauce. I'm gonna put some mayo with the lobster. So this is shallots, garlic, brown butter, mayonnaise, and lobster. 30 minutes. Stressful. But once you get into the threes, we freak. I'm making a cheese sauce. Cheese sauce begins like euphoria with a roux. So I'm going to saute some garlic and some spices, some chilies, smoked paprika, salt, garlic. And then you add the butter and the cornstarch and maybe flour and you get you thicken it up a little bit, then you add the cheese. This is Cheddar Jack. I don't know if that's too much cheese or not enough butter, but this is, um, well, we'll see. I think this is too ooey gooey. I'm gonna slow cook these onions long as we can. I want to get these kind of charred. I'll pour in some beer, pour in the Velveeta, and that'll be my little oniony beer cheese sauce. Oh, oh the mustard. Uh-oh, the mustard. Let's just stir. Let's just stir it all. You know, get this mustard and to chill out. And then here we have arugula. Typically a club sandwich has lettuce and tomato, but arugula's got some more flavor to it. What the heck? And then we're actually going to dress it with a little bit of olive oil, lemon, salt, and pepper. Again, if you're using vegetables, there's always a chance to season and add more flavor. So next, I need to prep my vegetables. I love daikon radish. So normally I think people would chop this up in a Vietnamese restaurant, but I don't have time, so just give this a little vinegary kick. If you don't know what that is, sometimes it's the thing that's like looks like strings under your sushi. I love pickled daikon. It is Me too. so delicious. Yeah, I'm trying to do a very quick pickle. Quickle, I'm doing a quickle. A quickle. Quickle. I put a cup of butter in here now, because it, oh, but now it looks too oily. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna drain some oil out. I don't know if I need more cheese or less oil or more melty melty time or what but something's wrong about this. Do we think this looks appetizing? What are you making right there? Uh, queso. I'm from Texas, you, got me, you can ask me about the queso. Okay, I don't make queso. That's not queso. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, I forgot the fucking milk. It's not a roux if you don't have milk. So we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna see if I can't combine these. Thank you, 24 minutes. Yeah, it's stressful. Are you saying that in a way that you don't think that I have time to do this over? I think you actually I'm melting in my failed cheese into the successful queso. What do you look, look at this, Eugene? It's more queso-y. Yeah, that does look more queso-y. Yay! This is getting to be beer cheese. Cheese and onions and beer. I'm gonna make plantain chips. Oh, you got a deep fryer too? Well, I was gonna maybe like shallow fry them. Do confidence, we? with confidence. Mm. Okay. I'm frying. You're frying. I'm frying, I'm frying. Ah, ah. Okay, off, off, <laughs> off. Ah! Oh, no. We have mythical chef Josh, Josh coming, right? Yeah. The finest Josh wine. I'm gonna just try and soak this beef. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting funky up in here. 
It is sandwich time. Architecture is a big part of a sandwich. When you're making an aioli, that is like 98% fat content. So that's gonna prevent a lot of moisture from seeping into the bread. It's also a great way to hold things in place, like arugula, which is gonna be our next layer. This arugula is nicely dressed. So we got some acid, we got some oil in there. Then I'm gonna go right with the turkey. Since this is a three layer sandwich, we're kind of alternating layers of meats and vegetables and cheeses on here. I'm gonna layer on our provolone picante. It's a nice sharp cheese. And then we're going to add our middle piece of bread on a nice okay. thick layer of, these are roasted tomatoes, simply garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. I'm gonna do a little bit more turkey. Hey, you're doing great, man. I'm pretty stoked it's on this. beautiful. Things gonna be too tall, you can almost smash it down. Yeah, you can smash it down. There yep. we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. A nice little smash. And there you have it, there's our Capri Club. So if you look at the layers here, this shows how a perfect sandwich should come together. The bread has enough structure to where you see the moisture from the arugula and the aioli starting to seep in, but it's not getting to the edge. It's created a perfect barrier for a moist sandwich that is structurally intact. Then the crispy prosciutto up top for that lovely texture and then a cartoonish green olive. 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna start assembly. This is a pate, liver, a must for banh mi, in my opinion, uni butter. Oh, I like how you can see, still see the uni in this. Okay, so let's add lobster. If I know anything about lobster rolls, you want as much lobster as possible. And scallops. Okay, this might be a little unwieldy, but they're getting seafood. Okay, let's assemble the first beautiful baby. It's cut pretty well. It's a dense bread. I don't have enough time to toast all the bread, so we're toasting half, half the bread. All right, this was Zach's 10 minute soak. I'm hoping it just gives it like a little funkiness, a little funky fresh. Eat this and you go, God damn, I ain't never had no beef like that before. Some cheese directly on this bread. Yeah, two feels like plenty. But look at this, this tomato is gorgeous. Holy shit. That is a pretty tomato. Damn. This kind of looks like applesauce, but it's jam, I say. Maybe I'll cut it in little triangles, because that's what you do. Oh, it's all oozing out. Mm. Marissa, that sandwich looks like it has cum on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, that was the first time I looked at that sandwich and my God, <laughs> it looks like a cum sandwich. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it does look it cummy! It's like peanut butter and cum sandwich. You know, I think my metric for success here is just beating Zach. Only two minutes left. Beef. Arugula. These caramelized onions. You ready? This is the moment. This is where it all happens. Yeah. Queef. Caviar. Oh, that is beautiful. And then finally, the, the imperial caviar. So we have caviar from Russia and Japan. Extra bread. Um. One. Wow, I don't know how they're gonna stack this. <laughs> wow. Equally beautiful. It almost looks like like a decon. Oh. That was disgusting. Yeah. That was really gross. Oh wow. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> Today we're going to be judging on taste, presentation, creativity, and is it a sandwich? For me, good sandwich bread, it's really important. There's a few things. You don't want to overproof your bread because that's what causes tearing. You want a tight roll on it so you don't have big holes. And then a nice crumb on the bread. You don't want it to be too dense or too fluffy. What makes a good sandwich for me is balance. One third, one third, one third. That's my personal preference. I like bread to be two thirds and then the filling to be a third. I want a wow factor. There's so many boring sandwiches out there, right? Anyone can make a turkey and cheese. You know, we've all grown up making PB and J's and whatnot. I want somebody to come in and wow me. To me, the best sandwich is a sandwich that makes me go, <gasps> Oh, I'll make you gas. Wow. <laughs> Hello, judges. Well, when I think sandwiches, I think lunchtime. And when I think lunchtime, I think cafeteria and school. So I wanted to bring you something like brown bag lunch situation. So I am presenting to you a peanut butter and soursop jam 
sandwich. It's a jam. I said I wanted to be wowed, and I know this this doesn't give you that illusion of like a big old Dagwood sandwich, you know, but this is a certain wow factor to me. It is very <laughs> evocative of a cafeteria brown bag lunch. You know, it looks like a PB&J with chips, but it's obviously very different. I will say the soursop, it is giving, um, I believe the Latinate root would be seminal uh, vibe <laughs> to it, um, which isn't bad. It's just a look. Almost looks like a marshmallow fluff. God. This presentation is giving me nostalgia. Yes. Like this looks like a sandwich that my mom would make for me. A brown paper bag it, open it up. All right, let's get, let's get into this loaf here. Um, so I'm noticing here, this is what I was talking about, uh, this tearing here. So this is happening because of overproofing. There's too much air bubbles going on in there. Okay, <laughs> this is a good sign. Dense. All right, let's see. This is a dense, dense loaf. Mm. It is soft though. Mm. If you want to give it a press, it, it is It is definitely soft, but it's got a very dense crumb. I think that tends to be a signature of overproofing, right? Is where the bottom, because it sort right. of collapses in on itself. Yeah. Like the bottom is going to be super dense because literally the weight, the gluten structures aren't able to actually Hold it up. Predicting that it's gonna be a little bit chewy, but I'm I we need to taste it. I think that we need to taste it. Mmm. Mmm. That is a texture of bread that I've never had before. <laughs> which new experiences are what food is about. And I and I think positive and negative is a False dichotomy. <laughs> you, know, I, you bite into it, it's like one just like, it's like gum. But it's like a gum. It's like a paste. Ass. It's like a paste in your mouth. Yeah. Is it, is it under? It's it, under or over, it's, I think incorrect? that- It's incorrect. It's incorrect. I wonder if it's because I put I put peanut butter in the dough as That'll well. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll yeah. do it. Peanut butter? is so incredibly finicky to work with uh, in terms of baking because the fat properties, so if you add like a couple drops of water and try and stir it to peanut butter, the fat seizes immediately. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people in baking will use what's called defatted peanut powder. So powder peanut butter mm -hmm. for future reference. Yeah. yeah. Also though, I've noticed you, you've put an incredible amount of salt in the dough. <laughs> See, the peanut butter was salted. Okay. And then I added some salt. Here's the thing, I'm very easy to please because Thank this God. is peanut butter and jelly. So even though, you know, all the things working against it, I'm getting peanut butter and jelly into my mouth. It was actually good by itself. I could really see soursop jelly working in like a dessert capacity. I still enjoyed the flavors. Like this is a sandwich I could eat. The bread was just technical issues mm. for making bread without a recipe. This is pretty cool. I think it's like so many points for creativity. I. I don't think I've ever eaten soursop before. I think I was recently at a place that had soursop ice cream and I was like. Which is so good. Yeah, I went with strawberries and cream to be clear, I didn't get the soursop, <laughs> but it piqued my interest. You're so, such an adventurous world traveler here. I saw it, I did not get You're it. You're such a hater. <laughs> This is almost exactly what I was looking for in terms of creativity. Like you are playing off of an established dish, especially one that we have nostalgia for. Well, I really love that you tried to make like a peanut butter bread, like putting peanut butter, the idea of putting peanut butter into the bread. That's something I've never had before. My esteemed judges. Is it a sandwich? Yeah. I would say so, based on my knowledge of sandwiches. Yay, I made a sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Josh. Eugene. Last Hello. time you were here, I gave you blood in cinnamon rolls. I was very impressed. Thank you. This season, I'm fancy. We might say hashtag bougie. bougie. <laughs> because I've had the women in my family inspire each dish. This one is my older sister, and she has very high tastes. I present to you my brioche bon mi. Wow. Dive into the cool waters of the fancy. <gasps> This looks, whoa, wow. Eugene, get the heck out of here. Wow. This looks incredible. Got the scallops on there. A little got caviar. The, the fresh jalapeno, the, the ikura, the salmon roe. You got the, the daikon and the carrot pickle. This is really, really impressive. Ever since I opened my eyes, I've been trying to picture in my head how I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. As the chef intended, is it a fold over situation? Yeah, it's a challenge. Okay, okay. <laughs> nice little braid here. Good braid on top. It doesn't have any like tearing on the edges. That's very good. 
This is a little bit more dense, I mm -hmm. think, than, than a brioche would normally be. Brioche, it's very important that you add the butter gradually and let it all get mixed into the dough. It smells nice. Well, Trevor, can you tell me what you're smelling mm. for? Uh, good bread smell. Mm, okay. Do you There's... smell any other ingredients? There's... Maybe, oh. do you see yeah. any There's ingredients? A secret? Wait. What is that? Josh, eat it. What's that? <laughs> That, judges, is salmon. So I baked oh. salmon into the bread just to continue the brioche I smell it. theme. This <laughs> smells smell very it. fishy. I can yeah. smell a, a lot of seafood, but I didn't smell it in the bread. Yeah, this just smells but, like but bread. But this might be overwhelming the, my nose. Yeah. I don't know. I just want to fish throughout. Well, I will say, I you, you were faced with a really tough challenge. <laughs> Holy crap, this is big. <laughs> <laughs> you have the smallest bread of the three. <laughs> the presentation was beautiful, <laughs> but it, it wasn't very ergonomic. I don't know how. <laughs> I just think I can. But I'd be curious to see if you could discover all the ingredients in there. <laughs> There's quite a bit. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, you have to do a little two bite. That's how we got that nickname. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, fella. Okay. Get in there, Ro. I got it. <laughs> no, I don't have it. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, I got this. I'm going to do. Um, it's so bougie. You, so bougie. <laughs> See? There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Mm. Get my bread on there. Mmm, <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Still too Mmm, <big. laughs> bougie. <clears throat> the brioche is eating slightly croutony. Um, that said, any, any sort of critique that I could have is just blown away from my face by the mm -hmm. fact that this is one of the most pleasant things I've put in my mouth in a long time. Like, this is genuinely the flavors are really good. The scallops are well cooked. The lobster is well cooked. I struggled with technically getting this in my mouth, but once it was in there, I enjoyed the flavors and the textures. Mm -hmm. The bread tastes really good on its own. Yeah. Like it is 100%. a little bit cakey, but maybe mm -hmm. just thinner slices yeah. so that it wasn't so hard to get <laughs> so, your yeah. mouth around. Mm -hmm. um, no, this tastes phenomenal. I love the creativity. I've never had this much seafood and variety of seafood on a sandwich before. If it was like, cooked by somebody slightly, like no offense, but like you know, someone like slightly better at cooking. Skills, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, but no, this is absolutely a dish that I could see on a menu right now that would genuinely take off. This is an awesome idea and executed pretty damn well. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I, I'm, I am as a viewer surprised that you don't think there's any gray area in this as a sandwich. Cause like, look at, it, it's, it's not yeah, a sandwich. Yeah. When I think of sandwiches, I think of them as finger foods. You can pick it up and, so it, it's a, she's, she's thick. <laughs> just these slices is just thick. I like it thick. <laughs> now the most important question of all, is it a sandwich? I feel like we made it a sandwich by putting it together. <laughs> Functionally based on the fact that one of the people at the table couldn't get their mouth around it and needed a fork and knife, and two of the people were able to take one bite before giving up and splitting it back open. Sandwich adjacent. It is a less sandwichy sandwich than many sandwiches in the same way that a chihuahua is a less doggy dog than a golden retriever, but a chihuahua is still a dog, thus the sandwich, I think, is oh, a sandwich. That's a good one. I can follow that logic. Right, 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 yeah. Judges, queef. <laughs> Thank you. Queef, queef, and that is that was the presentation. Okay, everybody, close their eyes. Um, no one's gonna address that. No. <laughs> um, I'm <okay>. excited. <laughs> what, what are we eating? Oh, I can smell it. <laughs> you get some queso. You get some beef. Put it together. <laughs> What's that spell? Please enjoy my delicious. Queef. <laughs> Thank you. Can we, can we stand for that? This is it's a lot of work. What you have before you is a steak and queso sandwich. The bread is an onion loaf. It's got a nice crumb. It's again a little bit chewy, but it's got mm. some nice air pockets. <laughs> air pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> oh, that's Excuse funny. Me. Give the keeps oh, on. We're done. Oh, oh, oh sorry, it. sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> this one also was really big, and so right before bacon, I decided to just push it down. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Generally, I was thinking about cow cakes kind of like boil over, and I'm like, get back in there, little guy. And you can tell now that because he punched it down, that's where all these wrinkles are coming mm. from. It's not a nice smooth top. We're doing it? All right. You go ahead. Let's go. Go for it, bro. 
get the queef. Tell me. These are very good flavors that are going around in my mouth. Like this is, I mean, it's, it's evocative of a Philly cheesesteak. You have the processed cheese, like a cheese whiz. Can you both sniff it? Cause it tastes really good, but it smells weird. Okay. Never mind. All right. <laughs> All right. The flavors are good, but it does smell a little funny. I don't know if it's Is it the dried like... nair? So speaking of cliffs, um, <laughs> there is, uh, there's like uh, brassicas in there. So like, I just got some cauliflowers. This is a jardinera. Yeah, I uh, cooked the beef with jardinera and used that juice as well. That's what it is. Yeah, Slightly yeah. Pickled, but duller. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like surprise cauliflower blast to the face that you wouldn't expect on a queef sandwich. Hey, right. I was biting sandwich. into this and I got this weird thing in here and I pulled it out and it's just this huge chunk, chunk of cauliflower. Yeah. Of cauliflower. <laughs> and so, Perfect sandwich. I, there's so many things that I like, but this is really throwing me off. Right, so at my restaurant, uh, whoever finds the cauliflower, you bring it up to the table and yeah. you can uh, trade that in for a, an, an extra queef on the house. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I it's a little soggy. Mm. It got a little soggy, but other than that, I like everything else going on here flavor-wise. The fact that you punched your bread down, Zach, made it so dense yes. that it is absorbing all of the steak. Yes. And somehow against you get all it. odds. You get it. You've made a great, well-constructed sandwich. I mean, I've been tearing it apart to look at it, but yeah. this is holding up really well. Mine just didn't hold together. Mine it's didn't either. It's falling apart and tearing apart. Mm. Sucks to suck. This hard. wasn't like, <laughs> I'm not trying to do this. This isn't intense. <laughs> <laughs> this just keeps happening. I love the creativity. I think it's really cool uh, to, you know, try to put onion like in your bread. <laughs> Execution maybe not perfect. Probably. But y your heart was in the right place and that's what matters, you know. Yeah. Judges, is it a sandwich? Yeah. This is right. definitely a sandwich. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Really the whole episode for me was trying to get you guys to all say this is one delicious queef. So Mm. Well, we I think there's one thing that comes to my mind after eating this sandwich. This, this is one delicious queef. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, I think we're just going to end the episode here today. <laughs> <laughs> Judges, we've been to the schoolyard, we've been to the sea, we've even been to a third location. Boy, <laughs> after all that travel, I sure could use a beer right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'd like to introduce you to the beer sandwich. That's right, a sandwich with a lot of beer. What you have before you is a beer bread with a beer cheese and a beer mustard with beer battered chicken tenders. Please enjoy a sandwich with so much beer in it. How is every ingredient so thick? It's really thick. Have any of you seen like a sandwich before? <laughs> Okay, a little dense, a little dense there. It's kind of a theme today that a lot of the breads are, are fairly dense. Yeah, it's soft enough. I think it's just gonna be chewy. I think this is really creative. Thank you. When I went to Ireland, that's the first time that I had a bunch of dishes where they used Guinness for so many things that I wouldn't even think of. And one of them was bread. They incorporated it into different things, but you've incorporated it to everything here other than the tomato and yeah, so there's really cool. Guinness in the beer batter chicken tenders. There's Pilsner in the bread and in the beer cheese. And then there's a sour in the mustard. Uh, I'm licking the cheese. Can you tell me the ingredients to this beer cheese? Yes, it was, I sauteed some onions and then mm -hmm. added in a Pilsner and then added in only Velveeta, sliced Velveeta. You didn't want the alcohol to cook out. You wanted to keep all of that sort of beer. Vomit inducing flavor in it's there. That's beer. good. Okay. It's beer. It, it is. It's beer. It's beer. Try yeah. the whole goddamn sandwich. I'm trying to hold I'm sorry. You're, not. Okay. You're licking around and choosing what you want. Eat the experience the chef designed. <laughs> yeah, bro. I feel like I have a hyperactive nine year old MMA fighter just like running around kicking the inside of my mouth. I'm being assaulted by this, yeah. but not in a bad way. Yeah. There's literally so many flavors in here Whoa. because of all the different beers, like using the wild yeasted sour in there. And so this is almost like at the end of the night, I'm just shoving cheese steaks and chicken fingers and mozzarella sticks in my mouth and then trying to wash it down with like a bush light that's been sitting out for eight hours on the counter. Yeah. Somebody ashed a cigarette into it and you're like, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. That's kind of the sandwich, but in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of college. <laughs> like, it should. It's a cheap sandwich. Like I could have gone to the store and dropped $200 on expensive fish. But I got you some, some 
fucking delicious chicken. A mustard and Velveeta, baby. Whatever, whatever did you keep? Nothing. I'm just, I'm just letting them know because they seem to be disparaging the ingredients. I love beer. I love drinking. And then when I bite into it, it's so weird. It reminds me of in college we used to play King's Cup. And one night we ran out of the good stuff and we were just mixing all these different beers. I like to consider myself a simple, hardworking man. <laughs> and this is a simple, hardworking man sandwich. And I really enjoy it. I do have a question. Are either of you feeling like some of the ingredients are like kind of coagulating into cement on like the back of your teeth? Mm -hmm. That's like, the Velveeta and the beer. <laughs> but it's yeah. kind of cool because then you can lick it and it's like a salt like <laughs> beer flavor. <laughs> Kind of drips in the back of the throat. It, it's definitely meant to ser be served piping hot, and it isn't. You know? <laughs> Obviously, right, right. cold yeah. breaded chicken is gross. Yeah. Cold cheese is gross. So, I feel like my body is having, you know, you know when you relive thing, it's like having muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, don't mix these again. <laughs> it's like Sounds like you should have lived a smarter life earlier. Because <laughs> <laughs> then it wouldn't evoke that memory. The bread is very good. It, it is actually the best bread of the day, I believe. And a lot of great flavor, a lot of great sugars came out of that beer. I think that was your most successful application of beer. Yeah, you didn't like the beer everywhere else, huh? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> is it a sandwich? It's yeah, a boozy absolutely. sandwich. Absolutely. Yeah. Did we all make sandwiches? We all made sandwiches, yeah. all made sandwiches today. I just wanted to say before we get to the reveal that nobody makes bread without a recipe we and do. making bread with a recipe is already extremely difficult and a lot can go wrong. All four of you managed to make a loaf of bread um, that wasn't exceptional or knockout or super amazing, but you made a loaf of bread without a recipe, which was really impressive. Um, so congratulations. That was very, very well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone hug Eugene. No. Sweetie. Oh yeah, you promised me a hug this episode. It no, it, no, it, yeah. uh, no, I didn't. I, you promised it. I will hug you. If you win. You know oh. what to do, judges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be announcing fourth place today. This sandwich and the bread made was a really fun twist on something that we're all familiar with. But unfortunately, the bread itself, the texture and the flavor just didn't make the cut today. I'm so sorry, Marissa. Yeah. In fourth place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Also, we have made bread on this show a few times Many before. Many times. So yeah. we, your bread was way better than I'm her like first on time. track yeah. with how this show works. Yeah. <laughs> I have the immense pleasure of announcing the third place sandwich. Um, this sandwich had a lot of ingredients. It was a fun idea. It just didn't really end up tasting that good, unfortunately. <laughs> Keith, third place, the beer sandwich. Holy shit. Just drink your beer, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> I thought I did a really good job. This is the lowest I've placed so far this season. I was really a ones and twos boy. <laughs> and you brought me down to the threes. Even my ham cookies. <laughs> Drink okay. your beer. Drink, drink, your your beer. beer. Drink, drink your beer, baby. Drink your beer, baby. Drink your beer, baby. You've almost been first and second so far. It's just one. You're just in one little dip. I still it's haven't gotten four. I still haven't gotten four. I have the pleasure of announcing today's winner yeah. without a recipe: sandwich and sandwich bread. Eugene, you gave a heartwarming homage to your sister. You gave us all the ingredients in the sea. Zach, you gave us. I would say very mediocre, everything. That sort of averaged out to a relatively good sandwich. And today, I am very happy to announce that our winner is Zach. You did it, you did it. We're Absolutely. Eugene. The house. I am so sorry, but the fact that none of us ate your sandwich as a sandwich, we had to grade it as such. It was easily the best thing we tasted. Zach's was somewhere in like, you know, the third range. But combining every single element of is it a sandwich, what's the creativity, and how did it taste? Zach ended up with the highest composite score, winning on what I can only call a technicality. Okay. We'll take it. Okay, no, now I'm mad. I lost to a f***ing queen? <laughs> Correct. I'm coming for my hug. Get over here, baby. <laughs> but Get in there. It, a hug has to be recipro- it has to, it, it, it takes two to hug. A queef beat my sister? <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week for the grand finale oh. of this season of war. And guess what? 
We're getting f***ing married. Not me and him, because he did that with his wife. <laughs> it's Wedding Cakes. Yay. The hardest, tallest, biggest episode yet. Next week on Without a Recipe, s'mores. For real this time. Oh my god, this is my worst nightmare. Oh, doesn't it smell like bones? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Ah! I also don't know, I also don't know, I also don't know! Ah!